Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Crewcast with Cole Patterson. I'm Jason Sukamel. That's Cole. Let's see if I can get this right without on the first. Row. That's Cole, right there. <laughs> Which is weird to me because on my screen, Cole, you're facing that direction. But that's Cole over there. So somewhere over there, whatever. Somewhere over there is Cole. Uh, hey, so Crootcast, another edition. Uh, Prime Shrimp is our sponsor. You see them up there at the top, 25% off uh, your order of five plus units. Use that promo code TEXAS25. Get you some delicious and more importantly, if you're like me, easy shrimp, easy to cook, easy to clean up. Go to primeshrimp.com. Hey, hit the subscribe button. Uh, like the video, do all those things so that you get your notifications uh, whenever Cole and I do videos or catch them or Anwar or all the other uh, interesting content we've got on this YouTube channel. So hit the subscribe button, like the channel, do those things too. So Cole, uh, you and I last week when we did our crew cast, I don't even remember, dude, that's like, sad as that a blur. I'm sure we were previewing the junior day to some degree, but the bottom line is Texas did have uh, its junior day on Saturday. Had a bunch of recruits come in, and they took them to watch the practice Saturday morning, and they had a kind of a barbecue event afterwards. And we were able to connect with a lot of the guys as they were leaving campus. Not as many as we were hoping for, Cole, right? Like, Texas doesn't make it easy, man. Some of these schools literally, literally, I have heard some of these schools walk these players out to the media and say, okay, do an interview. You know, most kids like the attention, man, but not Texas. Texas makes it difficult. They drop them in like one of three different parking lots, or sometimes they leave in a, they park in a parking garage. So we never know exactly where they're going to go or what door they're going to come out of. So, all right, let me get off my soapbox. But <laughs> anyway, so um, it, it could have been uh, could have been made easier for the media, and you know the kids could have got some extra attention and thought they were cool and on top of the world. But long story short, you and I did get to talk to a lot of the guys, a lot of the key p- personnel that were in town. Uh, I've talked to some guys on the phone or parents on the phone afterwards to get some intel. So um, without further ado, Cole, let's just go down the list of the guys we talked to. I've kind of got them checkmarked here on my list and got some other guys I need to call on still. But I want you to start off, Cole. I was in one parking lot, like two parking lots away doing an interview, and you managed to uh, track down Texas Commitment Trey Owens, who is always a great interview and it's always fun to talk to Trey, and he's always super personable. But uh, I'm going to let you take the wheel on this one. I didn't get to talk to Trey. Actually, I think I shook his hand as he was getting in his truck to leave. But um, you talked to quarterback Trey Owens. So um, any interesting newsworthy nuggets that you picked up from Trey? Yeah, he's obviously been a regular visitor to Texas. And so he was. He told us that he he's now recruiting. You know, that's no surprise as being the quarterback in the class. But his focus on the offensive line. He said he was around Ori Williams and um, um, all the other guys, Bennett Warren, all, all the offensive linemen that were on campus. He was kind of around them. He said they were playing Madden. He played a little bit of cornhole with um, A.J. Milwee and just really enjoyed his time. And, you know, he's already committed. He's kind of enjoying the process now. He said his uh, strategy in recruiting your alignment isn't so much as, hey, come play with me. I need you to block me. It's more a block for me. It's more about uh, – just being cool with the guys. He said he wants them to be comfortable around him. So it was kind of cool to pick his brain and see where he's at in the recruiting process as far as getting guys to join him. Um, he got to watch practice, of course, and said he got to watch Arch Manning, pay, pay close attention to Quinn Ewers, you know, saw they went through the drills, looked at their mechanics, how they were being coached, how they responded to coaching. Um, so all in all, it was a productive weekend for him. He really enjoyed his time, which is, again, no surprise. Um yeah, I guess the main takeaway is he's recruiting offensive linemen uh, first and foremost. He said he'll obviously get to the skill talent, but he wants the big guys in the class for sure. Hey, man, you need that skill talent, but you know what? Offensive linemen keep you from getting hurt, right? So <laughs> he's like, I'm not recruiting them saying, come to Texas and block for me, but like, it sure wouldn't hurt if you did, man. It sure wouldn't exactly. bother me if you did. But Bonus. You know, Trey's a pretty, like I said, a pretty personable guy. So it's probably smart. He's playing it right and just kind of building those relationships and, uh, you know, let the coaches do a lot of the heavy lifting. But I'm sure if those co- if those players ask him, hey, like, why would you come to Texas or, you know, whatever, he'll he'll be happy to tell them about it. But, uh, um, you know, they had a couple of running backs, Cole, but let's talk about one of the receivers that was in town, uh, a guy that we talked to briefly. We talked to his mom. He was also playing in the uh, seven-on-seven tournament that was in Round Rock. But Andrew Marsh – the 2025 receiver out of Katie Jordan, one of the top players in the country in his class. And this guy has a 
chance to be a five-star type talent. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of on that fringe right now. So, um, you know, we both kind of chatted with his mom and Andrew and his mom were all small, all smiles. I know you've talked to Andrew a few times. I think maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm misreading it, Cole. It's very early, but there's certainly not a team I would put ahead of Texas for wide receiver Andrew Marsh at this point of the race. Um, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me what your viewpoint is. Yeah, I've gotten to know Andrew a lot. He seems to be always at Texas whenever they're having a you know junior day or barbecue or really any on campus recruiting event. He seems to be on campus every single time. Um, you know, he's playing that tournament in Round Rock, but he still made it uh, made it a point to get to campus. And he told me that was kind of his first chance to really get to talk to Chris Jackson in person, the new wide receivers coach. He said they really hit it off. He already likes his personality a lot and. Like you said, he's already, you know, Marsh is one of the best talents in the country. He's a top 40 prospect in his class. Um, I don't know if you've been able to look at his Instagram or social media or anything, but he's been posting all these highlight reel catches from that tournament around Rock or he's mossing dudes, you know, going up against the football. It's a really big time talent. And as you mentioned, um, I don't think anybody's really in front, um, ahead of Texas after you're saying his recruitment. I think Texas is in a really good spot early on. He, told me that, um, you know, they're selling into being close to home, you know, being an impact player, a receiver. And so really big, uh, big to get him around Chris Jackson, kind of building that relationship. Yeah. And like getting from the UT campus to the Round Rock uh, athletic complex, I forget what they call it exactly, but those snow, no small feet, man. You and I made that drive back and forth and it's, <laughs> listen, I live in the area, so I shouldn't be surprised, but it's a, it's a bit of a haul, man. You're talking about traffic and everything yeah, too. Exactly, man. So, uh, good for him to make his way in because they, I want to say like they went to the seven on seven thing in the morning, but then they came to campus for practice. And then, he, of course, he, after that, he raced back out to the seven on seven. Uh, and he was down in, uh, he was down in Houston the next day for the Under Armour camp down there, too. Yeah. So he, he was all over the place. But yeah, yeah definitely made an emphasis to get to Texas. Good for him for being pretty proactive and being willing to yeah. compete and put himself out there. I mean, he's already very highly rated. A lot of those guys, more so than ever, just say, you know what, I'm just going to kind of rest on my laurels, if you will, and, and not go out and compete. Cause yeah. They, competitive. Yeah, they, they think, hey, uh, the only thing I can do is mess up and maybe drop down the rankings. But Andrew mm -hmm. uh, Andrew has no problem getting out there and competing and showing up, so good for him. Sure. Um, one guy that I'm going to try to call tonight, Cole, so I'm not going to get too detailed in him, but is uh, Reiner Swanson, the tight end. I did see him. Uh, I got a picture of him. I didn't get to talk to him, but he's the big tight end out of Laguna Beach, California. Um, you know, I know coming in, I talked to Reiner. I mean, he was really excited when he got that Texas offer. He does have upcoming visits like to BYU and Auburn and there's a couple other schools he's going to – I think Georgia, in fact, is one. He's got a busy upcoming slate of visits. But I remember him telling me when he got that Texas offer, he talked to his dad. And his dad's like, whoa, dude, this is like big time. Like Texas is one of the true blue bloods in college football. And he immediately set up that visit. It was his first visit. Uh, that he's taken. So I'm curious to talk to Reiner, uh, Reiner Swanson about the UT visit. I just haven't connected with him yet. So I'll keep working on that and keep your eyes on uh, Orange Bloods. If I get a hold of him, uh, we'll have that on orangebloods.com, of course. So uh, let's move down to offensive line, Cole. I'm, I'm kind of just looking at my list here. You mentioned Ori Williams. Uh, Daniel Cruz is, was there again. He's been there a ton. He was there in January. Another guy that came in for a return visit uh, Bennett Warren, the big offensive lineman out of Fort Bend Baptist, came in, and I, I don't remember if you were part of that. I was able to interview Bennett before he left, and, you know, it's interesting. He, he said, hey, man, these visits are making me more and more comfortable with Texas. He loved what he saw. He maybe had the quote of the uh, quote of the afternoon. He we said, what did you think of what you saw from the Texas uh, offensive lineman? And he goes, man, I never feel small. But I felt felt small out there. Yeah, you know, so, so yeah and then <laughs> as he's saying that, I'm looking up at him, like hold my microphone. He's, he's a big boy himself, but he goes, "Yeah, man, I'm yeah. small out there next to some of those guys." But really good visit. He did uh, have a tremendous multi-day visit to Oregon recently. Um, he's got official visits set up to Oklahoma and Oregon, but he did say he's, he's going home this week. He's going to talk to his family and uh, set up a Texas official vi visit for June. So the Longhorns are squarely in the mix there. Um, definitely not leaders. I mean, I almost kind of sense that Oregon made a really strong impression. Oregon might be tough to beat, but 
listen, Texas has had them on campus in January. Um, they had them on campus again last weekend. They'll get them on campus in June for an official visit. So I think Texas has a, a real shot there. He just said, hey, I'm not really in a hurry to make a decision anytime soon. So we'll see how that one plays out. Two other guys, Cole, big ones, big guys who are not going to make decisions anytime soon. Probably could have let off with these two, to be honest with you. But uh, Colin Simmons, the five-star defensive end out of Duncanville, and Nigel Smith, the uh, defensive lineman out of Melissa. Um, Colin, man, listen, I mean, he's number three in the country on rivals, right? He's former number one player in the country. Uh, number yeah. one defensive player in the country per rivals.com rankings. You know, Colin's not a guy. He used to do a ton of interviews. He still enjoys the recruiting process, but I did. I talked to Colin's mom on, I think it was Sunday night. Um, and she said, you know, he enjoys the process, but they're starting to pull him back from just all the media attention, which I totally understand it, man. It's, it's, she's like, you know, he enjoys it, but it's getting a little overwhelming. And she said it and it's true. And I, I said, you know, you're right. She goes, it's probably only going to get worse. And I said, no, you're hundred percent right. It, it, it will not just media and coaches and everything else are going to be pulling it in. But anyways, I had a really nice conversation with Colin Simmons's mom. Um, really kind of like we talked about the visit and it, it was a tremendous visit. And she said that they just loved what they heard from all the coaches. And she mentioned all pretty much entire defensive staff is recruiting her and Colin uh, Brandon Simmons, the director of recruiting is involved in that. Just sounded like they got a much clearer picture uh, on this visit. And, you know, he doesn't have a list necessarily, but his mom said, hey, man, Texas is going to be in that mix. They're going to be a school that's strongly considered. She said, hey, he's, he's visited Texas more than anywhere else. I mean, people talk about LSU a lot. Uh, there's been a lot of Georgia buzz lately, uh, Alabama, Oregon. He's going to go visit Florida, maybe go visit Tennessee. So this one's still pretty wide open, but – yeah. I would say Texas is in that in that grouping as he whittles it down. I think Texas stays in that mix uh, until the, the final two or three schools. Um, you know, it was, it was interesting talking to his mom, Cole. This is where I date myself. And <laughs> my daughter is his age. I've got a son that's a year older than Colin. So, you know, we kind of shared some similar conversations about just how we handle our kids. And it was refreshing. It was really nice to talk to her. She's got a really – kind of an interesting and just a grounded perspective. Man, she knows who her son is. I mean, he's, yeah. listen, he's a hot shot recruit. And, but, you know, <laughs> sometimes I got to keep him in check too. And he's still a kid and he uh, comes through the home the house and I have to do some corrections on his behavior and his attitude. And she goes, you know, he's a really good kid when he's talking to coaches and media, she goes, which I appreciate, but you know, he's still a, a teenager. But um, yeah, it was just mm -hmm. it was kind of refreshing and a, and a nice conversation. And I, I gained a lot of respect for her and even more respect for Colin. But um. Moving on to Nigel Smith, the defensive lineman out of Melissa Cole. If you had asked me three weeks ago, I would have said, I don't think Texas is even in this top five. I think technically he has a top 16, but I'm not sure I would have put Texas in the top half of that top 16, right? Coming into last weekend. Well, he ends up changing up his plans. He takes a visit to Texas. Uh, I talked to Nigel on Sunday night on the phone, and, man, he just said it was a really good visit. He goes, I loved the way they ran practice. I loved the way Bo Davis coached. He goes, man, he will get on you if you screw up, and he's going to make you do it again and again and again, and he'll come down on you. But he said, yeah. once you get it right, man, he's going to build you up and congratulate you and you know, give you an attaboy or a hug or whatever it is. And Colin's like, that's what I like, man. I don't, you know, I don't want to be treated with with uh, kid gloves. You know, I want I want a coach like that. Long story, I came into the last week thinking Texas is on the bottom half of that top 16. Um, I think Texas is probably top five, at least coming out of this weekend. Uh, I talked to a source at Melissa who said, yeah, they, they think the same thing. He is going to trim his list pretty soon. I think Texas for sure uh, makes that cut, but then you, know, you still have schools like Oklahoma and Ohio state that are, are big players for Nigel Smith. But um, I do think Texas is in a pretty good spot. So um, Cole, I'm going to move to, uh, other defensive linemen, a couple guys I think you connected with Mississippi guys, uh, Terrence Hibbler, the Rivals 100 uh, defensive lineman out of Mississippi, and uh, Kevin Otis, another guy out of Mississippi. I know you connected with both of them, so I've been rambling for a while, so uh, I'm going to hand over the mic to you, so to speak, 
Talk to me about those two guys. Yeah, those are two guys that Bo Davis personally offer. You know, he went out to Mississippi, uh, I guess it was January or February, um, kind of early in the winter and went by their schools, extended an offer. And, you know, right when both of them got those offers, kind of caught their attention. You know, they're all very aware of Texas. Um, they're moved to the SEC, something they find really attractive. Um, and just talking to them, they really enjoyed themselves. So it was both their first times at UT. Um, I know Otis also visited A&M the day before, but he spoke pretty glowingly of Texas as well and his relationship with Bo Davis. He got to spend time with, you know, Bo Davis um, and, you know, kind of see the facilities, see the practice. Um, Kevin Otis also, like, tweeted out some clips from or some pictures from practice and everything, kind of see what he was kind of experiencing. And Hibbler was talk about, talking about all the food and everything that was at Texas. He enjoyed himself in that part, you know, being a defensive lineman. That should be no surprise. Um, also throw in, uh, you know, he's a corner. Uh, P.J. Woodland is another guy in Mississippi that was also around Bo Davis. You know, he uh, was also in the OT7 tournament in Round Rock. He, so he didn't really get the full visit experience. He said he didn't really get to watch practice or anything. But he met with Bo Davis like those other two and kind of toured the facilities and looked really impressed. So between those three, you know, you could tell the move to the SEC is kind of paying off and, that respect, Bo Davis is taking a really personal approach in those recruitments. But, yeah, all three really enjoyed it. I wouldn't be surprised if they make another trip. Um, obviously, uh, Woodland and Hibbler in the 2024 class. Otis still has a whole another year left, being in 2025. But those are three four-star guys that Texas was able to get on campus, you know, be around Bo Davis and kind of sell their uh, program to them. Yeah, having that OT7 tournament in – was in Round Rock, so it in Austin. But – uh, in Round Rock the same weekend, Texas was having a practice, and they had uh, the coaches' clinic and their kind of mini junior day, if you will. On. Yeah, a lot going on, but mm -hmm. it worked out well for Texas because you had a lot of out-of-state kids who were in town for the OT7 tournament. They are able to kind of slide down to campus uh, for a quick visit. So uh, one more defensive lineman I want to uh, kind of reference and kind of saved him for last for a reason, but uh, Alex January, the defensive uh, tackle out of Duncanville, um, you know, I've talked to people close to Alex, but I'd never communicated with Alex, but I was able to talk to him as he was leaving me in a, a pool of reporters and kind of get his perspective. And I that was the first time I'd seen him in person, Cole. I mean, I've, I've seen him on TV, I've seen games and things, but like truly sit there and put a mic. He's a really well put together kid, man. Like, yeah. you know, as we do, as we're watching or talking to these kids, we're kind of eyeballing him up and down. Like he's, he can probably, he's hit the weights. He's brought in the chest and shoulders, yeah. but, um, yeah, it sounded like he had a really good visit. You know, he was here in January for their junior day, and that one was so big. There were so many kids at that junior day. And I had other people tell me this too, not just Alex, but they didn't feel like they got a great in-depth experience because there were so many kids at that junior day. Well, this one, there were roughly, you know, 30, 40-ish people there, 40-ish players there. Um, so these kids got a lot more one-on-one -on -one time and a lot of more in-depth time. They got to watch the practice and things. Um, so Alex January mentioned that. He said, hey, man, this time I got a lot more kind of personalized attention. Um, you know, remember, he was supposed to be at Oklahoma last weekend, but Bo Davis called and said, hey, we'd love to get you down here. So they switched and came in. Now, the flip side of that is he's no longer going to the Texas uh, spring game in April. He's going to go to the Oklahoma spring game. But he'll also be back. He has a Texas official visit scheduled uh, for January. So, um, you know, again, I, I'll say it, I keep kind of repeating myself. I think Texas fans are confident in this one just because he's been to Austin a bunch. His brother uh, goes to UT. Uh, his dad played at UT. And listen, it makes sense. And if I'm forced to make it a, a pick right now, I'd say, yeah, I'd probably pick Texas too. But I do think, and, and I've thought this before, and including after talking to Alex, he's pretty open-minded, man. I don't think anything is a slam dunk here the way some Texas fans uh, may think it is. So, I mean, Texas is going to have to work and roll up its sleeves to win this one. And honestly, it's a, re it's a recruitment Texas needs to win, man. He's an in-state guy, uh, defensive tackle. You can make it a case. It's maybe the most important position Texas is recruiting this class. I mean, it really might be overall uh, that and edge, I guess. And it's not a deep year in state for defensive tackle talent. And Alex January is at the cream of the crop. So, you know, you factor in his ties to the to UT, the position, the talent level, that's not a guy Texas can afford to miss on. So Bo Davis is doing a good job of making him a priority. And I think Texas is in a good spot there. But, again, I think Texas is going to have to 
continue to work at that at that one. Cole, um, a couple other guys that I want to touch on. Um, we're kind of mowing through them here, but um, one DB you talked to, one that I talked to. I'll let you start. These are big one, uh, literally and figuratively. <laughs> but Sullivan Bridges, uh, the long, lengthy corner out of Lake Belton. I had just talked to him a few weeks ago at Under Armour, but you got a chance, probably more importantly, to talk to him on Saturday after he had taken his Texas visit. Kind of give us uh, your impressions of how that visit went. Yeah, like you said, he's a big, long corner, a guy that immediately jumps out to you when you see him. And, you know, looks like an NFL player, you know, just with his size and length and what you see on film. So just getting me on campus is pretty big. Obviously, he's from Lake Belton, you know, teammates with five-star wide receiver Micah Hudson. But he's a big-time recruit in his own right, and Texas is making him a priority with Steve Sarkeesian, taking really a personal approach in that recruitment. He was able to watch practice. He noted that uh, – he was able to, you know, watch practice, watch the DBs go through drills that he already goes through in his training. And he says he joked that he could probably do the drills better than the DBs at Texas could. It's because he's so familiar with what they're asked to do. So he took notice of that. He just enjoyed practice, kind of seeing how, you know, Texas coaches go through practice, how they coach up players, if they do something right, or even if they make a mistake and things like that. So, you know, he took the visit as some, something that he can – kind of he, I mean obviously he enjoyed it but he really took it as something where he can take away and kind of picture himself you know practicing in the program how he'd fit in things like that um I do like where Texas sits in his recruitment but he's another guy that has a really open mind you know Alabama's another program that's in the mix USC um those kind of schools are also in his recruitment but Texas it's in a good spot like I said Sarkeesian's kind of taking a big role there getting on campus was pretty big he also participated in that overtime tournament as well. And was out there making plays on Sunday. Um, just a really big time prospect. He's like just outside of top 100 and on the rivals rankings, but that big time priority for his long ones. Yeah. And the guy that I talked to that's within the top 100 in the 2025 class though, uh, Galveston ball safety, uh, Jonah, Jonah Williams. And I had to tell a story about Jonah and this is, you know, I was kind of talking at the top about, Hey, you know, media, we're not all bad, man. We, you know, we're not doing to try to help <laughs> I reached out when we were compiling our list of visitors, you know, how we do we're texting or DMing or calling sometimes and just saying, Hey man, sometimes I'll specifically ask guys, like, Hey, are you coming to the Texas junior day this weekend? Mm. Uh, sometimes I just say more open-ended, Hey, do you have any visits scheduled to any college campuses this weekend? You know, we'll get mm. feedback from guys. Well, I hit up Jonah. Who's a man. I this guy looks like a million bucks, dude. Um, yeah. And I said, Hey, are you coming? I think I, I must have specifically asked him, are you coming to the Texas junior day on Saturday? And he goes, I don't know anything about it, but he goes, um, I don't know. I might try to swing by and he goes, I'll hit up, you know, I don't get in involved in the recruiting process. That's not our game. That's not what we're here to do. I wish other people followed that same, um, same strategy, but that's just not, you know, if a recruiter says, Hey, what school's right for me? I'm, you know, I'm never going to answer that kind of question, dude. That's, yeah. that's your decision or, Hey, how do you think Texas would play me? I, I don't, or do you think I could play early at Texas, man? That's a question for the coaches. You know, I'm here to report the news, not be a part of it. But anyways, you know, kind of inadvertently, I, I mentioned to this ju junior day, he knew nothing about it, but that kind of got things rolling. He ended up hitting up the Texas coaches. They're like, yeah, come on by dude. So, he was going to be in Austin for that or Round Rock for that tournament. I yeah. didn't know that. So it me kind of putting that out there inadvertently um, opened that quick can of worms, so to speak. He hits up the Texas coaches. He goes and watches practice on Saturday, talks to Jeff Choate and some of the other uh, Texas coaches, and then goes out to the seven on seven tournament. So um, there you go, Texas. He was awesome at that tournament. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen. He, he looks the part and he backs it up on the field. Really good kid, too. That's the first time I talked to him uh, just face to face, but I, I really enjoyed it. He's very, very mature, very smart. He didn't give up much in terms of what he's thinking of recruiting. But, uh, you know, yeah. he did tell me, man, he loved what he saw from that Texas visit. And I think the quote was like, I'm not going to lie, man, it felt like home. So, um, but he mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, a handful of other schools that are uh, have his attention uh, early on as well. But, um, you know, I think Texas certainly helped itself and just, you know, just laid a foundation piece. I always say with Joan Wills yeah. or Joan Williams, uh, it's not going to be anything that is the reason he commits to Texas, but you know, it, it gave him enough of a look where he said, you know, I'll probably want to come back here another time or two and, and see what's up. So, um, Hey, all you coaches that 
make it difficult on us sometimes. Sometimes we don't that, man. We help out even when we're not trying to. Um, maybe, we maybe help out a little bit. Um, yeah. So, uh, Cole, what are we leaving out here, man? Um, who did you you talk to? A couple guys out at seven on seven, I guess, right? That. Yeah, I mean, PJ was the big Texas guy that uh, oh, was well, Terry out there. What about Terry Bussey? You talked to. Yeah, Terry Bussey. Yeah, obviously him. He, uh, you know, dynamic athlete. The Texas, you know, I wouldn't say they're the leader in or anything like that, but I do think they're kind of made a push. You know, once they, you know, offered in January, I do think A and M is probably that team to be right now. Kind of like, probably guess LSU might be for Colin Simmons, but I don't think it's anything that Texas can't overcome. You know. It's uh, I think he did say he's planning to take a visit sometime this spring to Texas. So if they if that works out, if they can get him around the coaches, it'll be pretty big. He did tell me they want him at DB at corner. So I know he some schools want him wide receiver, others want him at DB. So he feels like he can fit in the secondary and be just fine there. Um, so yeah, they Texas kind of waiting the party to offer him. You know, they didn't offer till late January, but just getting in that race kind of kick started some things and. Another guy that looked really great on uh, on that overtime tournament, you know, that really big time player that kind of stands out right when you start watching him play. I'm a little surprised, honestly, and I know he told you that at Under Armour that Texas and some others are recruiting him at uh, DB. I don't know why. I just kind of thought he might be an offensive guy because he's such a dynamic guy with the ball in yeah. his hands. But I, like I said, then I mean, you can still put him on special teams and find ways to to get the football in his hand. Um, right. Make a package with him on offense, get the ball. You know, and kids love that. Yeah, anytime you talk about playing both ways, hey, kids eat that up. So maybe some, you know, you mentioned LSU with Colin Simmons. I would have strongly agreed with you um, two months ago, six months ago, that LSU was was the leader there. Um, LSU just lost its defensive line coach. Literally, the news came out the day of the junior. When he was on campus. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I haven't talked to Colin. I don't know how much that will impact, but it's got to have some kind of impact, right, to some degree. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But beyond that, I mean, even taking that out of the equation, I really think Texas improved its position last week. I'm not saying Texas agree. is a leader. I'm not going out sticking my neck out on that much. But I really think Texas helped itself. Now, that being said, Cole, he's going to A&M this coming weekend. You know, I mentioned some other visits. Uh, um, Tennessee might get one. Florida's got one coming up. Oregon's trying to get him on campus. He was going to go to Colorado, but uh, that didn't work out. So um, there's going to be a lot of changes in momentum in this one, okay? Mm -hmm. But I do think Texas really connected well enough where, you know, A&M's going to make a move this weekend. They're going to make an impression. You know they are. I mean, Mm -hmm. they have good recruiters and good facilities over there. But I think Texas did enough last weekend uh, with Colin and with Colin's mother, equally as important, um, I think Texas is right there, man. I, I don't know that I would call LSU the leader at this point. I mean, we'll see how that shakes out with their coaching staff and everything else. Mm-hmm. But I think Texas is in a, a pretty good spot right now. They just they got to keep chipping away. So, um, Cole, pretty eventful uh, week weekend. We knew it would yeah. be. And I'm looking at our list, and, you know, we've still got guys that we need to track down. I had Aaron Hampton on our list. He set up a Texas official visit. Uh you know, Freddie DeBose is one of my favorite guys to talk to. The wide receiver, he was on campus. Uh, Daniel Cruz and Ori Williams, a couple of offensive linemen. Zena uh, Umeza, Umezula, Lula, 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 was, I somehow, somehow I'm going to actually learn how to it's, pronounce his name because I know he's told it to me. It's Umozulu or something like that. But uh, Zena was there. So, you know, we still have some guys we need to track down. Ty Anthony Smith, um, I, I mentioned uh, Reiner Swanson, the tight end out of Cali. So, the good news is we're able to get a lot of updates. The good news is we still got a lot of guys to call, so we'll have a lot of content on Orange Bloods. We'll have a lot of content uh, moving forward on the crew cast to talk to you because we're officially in the, the busy se- season of uh, of recruiting, and we got camps going up and different recruit different events. And then before we, well, we're almost in April, so before we knew it, yeah. know it, we're into June for official visits, and that's when things really get interesting. Fine so, by. Yes, indeed. Always does, doesn't it, Cole? So. Um, all right, guys. Well, hey, that's uh, appreciate. That's thirty minutes of everybody's time. I thank everybody once again for checking out the Crew Cast. I'm Jason Sukamel, joined as always by Cole Patterson. Check out our sponsor, not just check them out. Support our sponsor. Go to PrimeShrimp.com. Twenty five percent off if you get five or more units. Use that promo code Texas twenty five. Uh, get your twenty five percent off. 
as importantly, almost as importantly, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, do those things that help help us grow this channel, help us add more content that can we can keep bringing to uh, to you viewers and you subscribers to Orange Blood. So uh, we'll have more coverage on Orange Bloods throughout the week, including in the War Room on Thursday. Uh, Cole, I appreciate your time. Blake, our producer in the background. As always, we appreciate Blake's time. Most importantly, we appreciate all the viewers' time. Everybody have a great week, and Cole and I will be back to talk to you soon. Take care. Subscribe, Subscribe to the channel! <laughs> Do it now! <laughs>